anyone who brings a Jew will get a free car. This is how a used car salesman in the Ramallah area chose to advertise the business he owns. The ad, which circulated widely on social media networks, created a wave of incitement and violence against Jews. This is only one result of a much wider terrorist phenomenon in Judea and Samaria. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is My State, a program on current events, my belief in God, and my journey in the Holy Land. In the current Swords of Iron War, the Judea and Samaria sector is one of the main conflict zones outside of the Gaza Strip. Since October 7th, the Palestinian terrorist organizations in Judea and Samaria, especially Hamas, are seeking to escalate the tensions by causing unrest in the Palestinian public. They are doing so by flooding social media networks with calls to come out and confront the IDF forces. This is how, shortly after the war began, a wave of terror started all over Judea and Samaria. As a result, while Israel is conducting a war in Gaza with the goal of destroying Hamas, she's ultimately doing the same throughout Judea and Samaria. Basically, we can call this the front that no one is talking about. Everyone is discussing Gaza and Lebanon, but no one is talking about the extreme unrest in Judea and Samaria. Ahead of Ramadan this year, security officials estimated that the terrorist organizations would increase their efforts to carry out attacks during the holiday. Now, for the first time since the Second Intifada, the IDF is facing a new security reality in Judea and Samaria. Iran is leading an intense war of attrition against Israel through Hamas and the Islamic Jihad. So I'm standing here at the Gush Etzion Junction. You can see a lot of military presence in this location because terrorist organizations committed multiple terrorist attacks, taking the lives of Israelis here where we stand. According to Israeli Ministry of Defense data, the Iranians are investigating many resources in this war against Israel. In terms of finances, every year they transfer millions of dollars to terrorist organizations, including Hezbollah and Hamas. In the past year alone, Iran transferred about $700 million to Hezbollah, while about $100 million were transferred to Hamas. So Iran's strategy seems to be to try and create a regional defense umbrella for the armed terrorist organizations in Judea and Samaria, and threatened to launch a multi-arena campaign from the Gaza Strip, southern Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen if the IDF acts against them. This is Israel's new security challenge. The security establishment is aware that it is necessary to act with great sensitivity, since restricting religious freedom will play into Hamas's hands and will affect the entire Arab world, and not just internally. At the same time, Hamas and other terrorist organizations transfer thousands of shekels to anyone who wants to carry out an attack. This is not new, but the fact that the attack has a religious element, alongside the fact that quite a few Palestinians have been out of a job in Israel for a very long time, increases the fear in the security system that young Palestinians will be tempted by money and enter the circle of terrorism. Well, Oded, it's great to be here. Efrat uh, is located in Judea and Samaria. Could you please explain a little bit about this community to our viewers and also a little bit about the history of Judea and Samaria at large? So let's be a bit more accurate because when you say Judea and Samaria, it's quite a big region. So you have our capital, which is Jerusalem, adjoined on its south. You have the city of Bethlehem, and literally adjoined to Bethlehem, you have the city of Efrat. Many of the biblical stories actually occurred in this geographical region. 
Efrat specifically is mentioned in the Bible a few times. Mm -hmm. Efrat was established in 1983. One of the visions of the people who set up the city was to build a city and not surrounded by a fence. That has basically worked uh, for the last 42 years that we are enjoying very good relationship with the nearby Arab villages. So now, fast forward into the 7th of October, terrorist attacks of uh, Hamas on the Gaza periphery cities. How did that affect you and the people here in the West Bank? Because geographically speaking, the, the terrain is almost the same. They're not far away from the Israeli communities here. So when we hear the news of what's happening in the South, already in the early hours of the morning, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, we immediately understand that we need to have more power, more forces to defend the city. The army brought in more forces. So I would say that so from the 7th of October, literally up until today, the focus on security hasn't been left for one single moment. The IDF has always responded to this by conducting operations. Now, during the war, the IDF is constantly operating in various ways in Judea and Samaria, including arrests, the confiscation of weapons and terrorist funds, raids on the apartments of wanted persons, the destruction of explosives laboratories, and the demolition of terrorist homes. The IDF has utilized in uprooting the Hamas infrastructure in the West Bank by concentrating their efforts against the organization's student cells in the universities in Palestinian cities. They are called Hutalot. The cells operate in Hebron, Birzet, Abu Dis, and al universities. In recent months, the Shin Bet and IDF raids were carried out on warehouses of the universities from which Hamas equipment, such as flags and uniforms, were confiscated, and many arrests were also made, mainly in the Ramallah sector. These institutions shamelessly provide sponsorship to Hamas cells and allow them to operate under the innocent cover of a student body. The main goal is to shape a new reality there the day after the war. The real battlefield is the students. Hamas wants to incite them to violence and is providing the funds for it. While the IDF wants to prevent Hamas from doing just that. Here are some statistics. Since the beginning of the war, approximately 2,600 wanted persons have been arrested in Judea and Samaria approximately 1,300 of which are Hamas operatives. Many of those arrested in the last two months are wanted senior Hamas officials, and some of them terrorists who carried out attacks against IDF forces. The Shin Bet estimates that another reason for the boiling tensions in Judea and Samaria is the difficult economic situation. Approximately 120,000 workers usually enter Israel on a daily basis for work. Since the start of the war, however, they have been unable to do so. To address this challenge, Israel is considering a pilot program for gradually introducing several thousand workers a day from Judea and Samaria into the territory of the State of Israel. Many members of the security cabinet fear that the Palestinian workers who will come to work in Israel will carry out revenge attacks following the war in the Gaza Strip and the assassination of Salah el Ahuri in Beirut. The rising trend of trampling attacks, live shootings, and knife stabbing also make it difficult to approve such plans. As we described to you in a previous episode on Judea and Samaria, the border between Jordan and Israel is still breached and Iran continues to smuggle weapons and other ammunition through it to arm the terrorist groups in Judea and Samaria, including standard weapons and explosives. So you can see how all of these dynamics are coming together to create a very complicated reality 
for Israel's security establishment to address. So as always, the situation is very complicated and we do not have all the answers. I call on all of you to join us in prayer for wisdom for our leaders and for God to reign in this region. Join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel. Thank you for your support and together we will win this war. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.